Hi, everybody. I want to thank Demand Progress for putting together this fantastic panel. I'm always excited to talk about one of my favorite things in the world, unions. Increasing workers' voice and power in their workplace, in their industry, and in our society at large is at the very center of my politics. I've spent the better part of my career fighting for workers' rights as a union organizer at SEIU, at the AFL-CIO, and now as a member of Congress. I'm pretty much the union organizer in Congress and creating a multiracial working class movement to transform society is probably the single biggest organizing passion of my life. As both a frontline union organizer and a government official, I've seen both sides of the coin, the struggle that workers face every day and the power that comes with their ability to form a union and bargain collectively. Over the past year, we've witnessed workers exercising that power in new and exciting ways. Workers are on the march in workplaces that have fought unionization for years. Think Starbucks, Amazon, Apple, Trader Joe's, you name it. Despite Starbucks spending millions of dollars on union busting lawyers and consultants, there are now over 180 unionized Starbucks stores across the country and more than 120 others have elections pending. Wow, that's incredible. Meanwhile, Amazon held up to 20 captive audience meetings a day leading up to the election in their Staten Island warehouse, yet the Amazon labor union persevered and won a big victory there. Last October, the world watched as over 100,000 workers joined together to go on strike in different places all across this country. Folks even gave the month a new name, Striketober. <laughs> That momentum has continued well into this year. There were already 153 strikes from January to May of 2022, compared to 78 strikes during the same period in 2021. That's almost twice as many. It's incredible. Workers are fed up with low wages, poor benefits, and disrespect. And they're flexing their collective muscles by creating their own organizations and acting collectively. Look, y'all. There is real power in a union. I'm so inspired by the workers leading in this moment and creating the great next chapter of our American labor movement. And guess what? That includes workers fighting to have a union right here in the halls of Congress, our own staffers. House staffers help Congress operate in every way and they serve the American people. Unfortunately, until two months ago, they were not promised legal protection for acting or bargaining collectively. Following the passage of the Congressional Accountability Act way back in 1995, the Office of Compliance, which is now known as the Office of Congressional Workplace Rights, adopted regulations that would extend legal protections to congressional staff who choose to organize and bargain collectively. These regulations required congressional approval for enactment. At the time, Congress applied them to all the workers on Capitol Hill, like the Capitol Police and the Library of Congress, except the folks who work for us directly in our district offices, DC offices, and committees. So for 26 long years, our own direct staff have been denied this fundamental human right to have a say at work. Earlier this year, I was approached by the Congressional Workers Union and asked to introduce a resolution finally approving these regulations for them. I was so honored to be asked. The resolution garnered tremendous support, earning 165 original co-sponsors. It was undeniable that this was the right thing to do, but it wouldn't have happened without the workers taking that first step. At long last, on May 10th, the House passed my resolution, completing the final step to give most congressional workers in the House legal protection to organize and bargain collectively. On July 18th, these regulations will take full effect, extending legal protection to House staff who choose to unionize. See, power in a union, right in the temple of our democracy. It's been an incredible honor to work with the Congressional Workers Union as they fought tirelessly for their rights at work. They shared bravely their workplace experiences, good and bad, clearly illustrated their need for the protective right to organize and demonstrated the sheer power of worker solidarity. It's a privilege to be able to support their efforts through legislation. All workers deserve a union, from coffee shops to warehouses to the halls of Congress. I'm here to keep on fighting right alongside them. Thanks so much in solidarity.